This is the traditional radiator cap design where this is the radiator and at the top there's a cap. What happens here is there's a seal here and pressure builds up in the system. As things heat up they expand and if they have nowhere to expand they build up pressure instead. That pressure pushes on the spring on a rod that holds the seal down. Once the cooling system reaches the pressure that this radiator cap is rated for, a lot of times it's 16 PSI but it can differ, it pushes up on this seal here and it overcomes the force of the spring allowing the coolant to escape through this vent here and then it goes through a hose to the bottom of an overflow tank and then it fills up with liquid. It's already got some liquid in there and it can take however much it's designed to take and as the system cools down after you shut the car off and it's parked for the day, everything cools down and atmospheric pressure in this tank is actually higher than the coolant system pressure and it will push the coolant back through this tube, past the seal, and refill the cooling system. This area here is typically the highest point of the pressurized side of the cooling system because you want to get rid of any air that you have. Air that's in the system is going to float to the top and if it's in the radiator, the top is right here. So as soon as this opens and stuff starts escaping, any air bubbles in the system are probably gonna be pushed out and sent to this tank. And in the tank, they'll just float up to the top here and then mingle with the rest of the air here. And then when coolant is drawn back in, it'll draw in coolant and not air. Well, it'll draw in coolant until there's nothing left to draw in but air. So you wanna keep that topped off a little bit with coolant. It'll generally have a marker on it where you want to keep the level at. There's also a cap on here, but it's not pressurized. It's usually just a little flimsy plastic cap that's attached to a tether. That cap will often also have a hole in it. Another design you'll see is the expansion tank, named because it expands the pressurized side of the system. Instead of there being a radiator cap on the radiator, you have an expansion tank cap on the expansion tank. Again, this is the highest point in the radiator. Coolant will travel down this tube and into this tank, all the air will float to the top, and then if pressure builds up to the point where it pushes stuff out, air is going to be the first thing to go. There's also a return line on some systems that will send coolant back into the system from the tank. This area up here works exactly the same as the radiator cap design, in that any pressure is vented off to the side after the cap seal is pushed up on, and then this hose will lead elsewhere. That could lead to one of these tanks. It could just lead to atmosphere. Usually you don't see that kind of thing except for unless they've built the system where they know that they're not gonna be venting liquid out very often, or it's a race car and they just don't care, or it's been modified and they just don't care. Having this vent to nothing is potentially very messy, so even some racetracks don't allow you to do that. You'll have a tank like this and it'll capture any overflow. Sometimes it's not even designed to let overflow go back in. It's just there to catch it and you can pour it back in later, but either way, it retains the liquid and you don't make a mess. Some of these may have sensors in them that let you know via the dashboard if your level is too low. If you have any questions or feel like I missed anything important, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video.